Mpumalelo Zikalala is our legal analyst. Um, if I can just check with our team in the gallery, is he there and ready to talk to us? Uh, he is indeed. Mpumalelo, it's great to talk to you as always on what has been an incredibly interesting time in court, hasn't it? And you, you've been watching alongside me, even though we're sitting in, in different rooms. Would you mind if we begin, um, because there have been two cases in court of uh, incredible public interest. Of course, we were live in the High Court in Pretoria just earlier on the Senzu Meiwa murder trial, those confession statements being read into the court record. Can we begin by um, tackling what has just happened in the High Court in Johannesburg, Tabu Besta and Nandipa Mogudumana losing, essentially, this urgent application to the court? Good evening, so good afternoon to also to your viewers. I think the court was going back to the basic principle that if you're paying a matter to court on an urgent basis, there are a number of things which are going to be considered. Pertaining to this one, irreparable harm which you're going to suffer and all the other alternative remedies which are going to be there. So the court was basically saying, you've come to court on an urgent basis, saying that you're going to suffer harm, but that harm is not identifiable. It's only harm which is perceived that maybe I may suffer at some point in time if a certain witness is caught. So if you go to court based on that particular speculation with no particular grounding as to what exactly is the harm that you're going to suffer, then it, it cannot suffice. Mm. And then section, certainly it's the certification of the freedom of rights of expression, especially to media houses, not necessarily those individuals that would carry out the news on a, on a, on a, on a regular basis. The one of saying that the minute you say it has to do with the media, the minute you say it has to do with public interest, then we have an interest on that particular matter and it must be broadcasted and be sent or be, 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 be viewed or consumed by all South Africans. Just as long, by the way, which I think maybe the judge would have added or which is going to be known by our, all individuals. As long as what you are saying is the truth, then it can be broadcasted in, in, in whatever manner or form in which you want it to be broadcasted. Mm. In. So basically, the, 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 the court lamenting the rights of saying that when it comes to the media, you have, it's a free-for-all type of process. Just as long as it is the truth, we have failed to display what type of irreparable, irreparable harm we are going to suffer. Yeah. On those basis, I'm not going to follow your application. Uh, you know, it's very interesting as well, uh, Mpumalelo, that the judge also says, um, you know, even if Multichoice and Showmax were indeed um, party to the press code, which they are not, but even if they were, he says, this application would still have failed. Mm. Coming back to the point that what is important in what our law looks at is, are you saying something which is truthful? If the answer to that is yes, then you can go ahead and state it. Whether in your broadcasting whatever that you are saying is true, there's going to be some profits in which you are going to make. It's neither here nor there. Maybe that's another point that can, they can take up at another place on a civil basis so that we can have this sacred was and for all in our legal space. However, for now, the law as it stands today, you can have a story published in your name the person who is publishing the story can make a bit of money from it, and you have nothing that you can do about it, just as long as what they are saying and talking about is actually true. Yeah. Um, it was very interesting as well to see, um, I'm just getting all of the names right in my head here, Advocate uh, Llewellyn Morland for, for Tabo Besta. He, he struggled, and, and he struggled um, very plainly in front of the court to show indeed what would be precisely the prejudice that his client might suffer, right? And, uh, and he's right. Uh, it's difficult to say because Tabu Besta and Andipa Magurumana have not been given the opportunity to uh, watch this docuseries before, before it airs. That was in part what they were both applying for, right? To watch it first and then to decide for themselves um, whether there was any prejudice and when it might be aired in the future. But it's a, it's a difficult and, and, by the looks of things, impossible thing to show that there mm. might be in the foreseeable future some kind of prejudice that may be suffered. Mm. And the most important question of the way in which the law would look, look at that particular point would be to say, after I've suffered that harm, is that harm going to be irreparable? The answer is no. The only irreparable harm, irreparable harm that can be considered is that if someone loses their lives, they're no longer there to come and partake in any litigation. But if there are alternative remedies, for example, you can sue them on a civil basis. Uh, you can have other uh, legal reports that you can be able to engage. That On that basis, the matter is not urgent and it can't be interdicted. Or there's something that can be interdicted at this point in time in order for you to stop the broadcast from taking place. But most importantly, then the question is, whatever which is being broadcasted or which is going to be stated within the media, is it something which is accurate? Or are they lies? If it's, if it's accurate, then they don't have a defense at all. 
So I think the strategy should then move on from the side of Dr. Nani Pamakotoman and Mr. Besta to say, let's watch the document, what it has to say about mm-hmm. us. If there are instances in which they've, they've told lies about the sequence of events and the manner in which things have been done, if there are instances in which there have been opinions which are inaccurate or actually border on the side of defamation, then let's consider the legal recourse out of defamation of criminal injury or even suing those particular individuals, including Showmax, because they would have opened the gate to this particular piece of information being broadcasted to a number of people. Let's sue them. So the court is simply saying, don't jump the gun, wait up until the harm has occurred, and only after the harm has occurred, then you can go to court and seek the appropriate relief. But um, Mpumalelo, um, Bester's lawyer does also say in response to that, that if indeed the documentary is, which of course now we know it will, um, and indeed there is some prejudice that is caused, that that would benefit his client. It would ultimately benefit his client if indeed um, his right to a fair trial is called into question. Mm. But we also have to take a step back and say, when we say a right to a fair trial, who is going to be the deciding individual in that trial? It's going to be the presiding officer, the prosecution, and also the defense. So the judge is not going to go to court one day and say, after listening to what the document is saying, the judge is going to go to court and say, you as a state have got to provide information to me, which I'm going to assess. And then after the assessment, I'm going to decide whether it should be accepted in as evidence and the proper value that I should offer to it and maybe even find the, your, your client's guilt or not guilt. So whether there is something in the media which is taking place, the judge is, is as a, as a, as a, as a imaginary veil which is attached to them. So they can't even look and be able to sit on and see what is happening. Yes, they may look at it, but it can't be used as a deciding factor when it comes to the deciding whether someone is innocent or guilty. So there's no privilege which, which is going to be suffered by them during the main chart because the process of analyzing and processing whether they are guilty or not is something which is told completely separate mm-hmm. and the documentary has nothing to do with it. And, and there wouldn't be any influence potentially on witnesses testifying in the trial? It, it, there would be influence. I, I think it would be a bit ignorant if we're going to um, accept that. But there, those particular instances are then separated through cross-examination, through examination in chief and re-examination, and all the other questions that should be able to come from the court. So what is important is that whenever a witness goes into the witness box, they're going to tell us what they think is the truth and what ought to be the truth, and you're able to test that a number of times during cross-examination, also in re-examination, and also questions from clarity which are, which are going to come from the court. And if you can see that there's been certain influence that's been caused by a certain documentary, then it's easy for one of the parties to then say, in fact, what you are stating here is not, is not the truth should be disregarded. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that works in favor of the accused, by the way, because it then means if that evidence is eliminated, it's a plus from to, to the side of the accused. They are planting reasonable instances of doubt, which at the end of the day, when accumulated together, will lead to a not guilty verdict. Uh, I have to ask you just one question before we let you go, and it's on the Senzumiwa case and those confession statements. Um, which have now, we know they've been ruled in, uh, as admissible, they've now been read into the record, and it, it's the first time, as far as I know, that Kelly Kumalo's name has now officially popped up, uh, because we now know what's contained in these confession statements. C- can you give us a, a quick comment on that, uh, Mpumalelo, before we let you go? Hmm. I, th- I think it's going to be very interesting when it comes to cross-examination as to, from the side of the investigation officer, if someone has been implicated through a confession statement, why didn't you pursue the prosecution against them? What was holding you back from doing so? But I think, again, when it comes to cross-examination, whether they are authentic or not, whether they really understood what they're trying to state in those confession statements, is still going to come under dispute. And because of the mission, I think it's going to be very long pertaining to these statements alone. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, the judge there is saying that the confession statements, yes, they've been ruled admissible, but the state still has to prove that the statement is indeed from that particular accused. Mpumalelo Zikalala, legal analyst, pleasure talking to you. Thanks for staying with us this afternoon.